Welcome medical terminology students. I plan to lecture over the PowerPoint this very first chapter. After that, we don't use PowerPoints in the face-to-face -face course with medical terminology. I have them in the online course just for added content, uh, but basically your textbook is your go-to place for every single chapter that we go through the rest of the semester. This is a very introductory type chapter and that's why I take the time to lecture and go over this first introductory chapter. So the language of medicine, chapter one. Why do we need to learn the word components of medical terms? You don't need any previous knowledge of biology, anatomy, and physiology to understand these medical terms. It's possible to understand very complex terminology. This term in front of you takes up almost the whole PowerPoint slide. Hepatical cholangeal cholecystenteroostomy. Say that 10 times fast, right? We don't look at the terms as a whole. We break them down in medical terminology so that soon enough, you'll be able to tell me the definition of that term. What do these words have in common? Cardiology, dermatology, and psychology. They have that suffix logi which equals the process of study. That's the definition of logi, the process of study. And you can see, as I put it in a different color, at the end of every term, logi. The objective to studying this medical language, number one, we're gonna analyze these words by dividing them into smaller component parts or pieces. We break them down. We never look at the term as a whole, okay? We always break them down into parts. Memorizing terms is not the primary objective. We will not memorize a term. We memorize parts. Learning the component parts of words is our main focus. Cardio means heart. Logi is the study of. Be aware of spelling and pronunciation type issues. For example, the ilium versus the ilium. I said that exactly the same way, the ilium versus the ilium. I-L-I-U-M is a part of your hip bone. The I-L-E-U-M is part of the small intestine. Building blocks. This course is set up to build upon previous chapters like a puzzle. It's very important that you do not neglect any aspects of the learning process. If you want to do well in this class, you need to do the exercises at the end of the chapter and throughout. The answers are provided. They're right in the book to help you. So do them when you're practicing for tests. Check your own work and see how you did. You must memorize all the components as we progress. Remember, we don't want to memorize the entire word, just those basic components. Learning a new language, and that's really what medical terminology is, is learning a new language. Studying medical terminology is like learning that new language. It will first seem strange and very complicated. How do we get started? Your first job is to learn how to divide these words up. This term, without any of those slashes, is electrocardiogram. An EKG? An ECG, have you heard of those before? Maybe had one done before? Have family or friends or neighbors or relatives that have had them done before? Electrocardiogram is what an EKG or an ECG stands for. On this slide, you can see that we broke it apart. We have electrocardiogram split up. Elector, you can see the arrow down there says it's a root. The O's come down, and you can see that they're combining vowels. Cardi is a root, and gram is a suffix. Remember, all suffixes are at the back or the end of a term. The root is a foundation of the word. All medical words have one or more roots, okay? And there we have that same simulation again, the electrocardiogram broken down into parts. A suffix is a word ending. 
all medical words will have one. Okay, all medical words will have a suffix. A combining vowel links the root to the suffix or links the root to another root. So these two O's here are combining vowels. Usually they are an O. Sometimes, a handful of times, they're an I or an E. 95% of the time, they are an O. The combining vowel, this is a good uh, screen to come back to or make note of. The combining vowel is dropped before a suffix that begins with a vowel. So gastritis is our term there. And I put a hyphen between it. Gaster is one part. Itis is another part. Gastro is our combining form. That means stomach. When you start making flashcards, you're going to put gastro on the front side, and on the back side, you're going to put stomach. That's the definition of gastro. Anytime you see a medical word that has gastro in it, you know it's something to do with the stomach. Itis means inflammation, and there's a typo there. There shouldn't be a space between they, the, it, Auto-corrected it to it is. It needs to be sucked together there. Itis means inflammation. Okay, that's our suffix that means inflammation. The combining vowel is kept. So, so the deal with that slide is that we don't say gastroitis. Gastro is our combining form that means stomach. Itis means inflammation. We don't say gastroitis. We drop that vowel, that O, because the suffix begins with a vowel. Itis begins with I, right? So we don't say gastroitis. That's wrong. That's not a medical term. You won't find it anywhere. Okay? It's a made-up word. Gastritis is your term here. We drop the O when your suffix begins with a vowel. The combining vowel is kept, though, between more than one combining form or root, even when the second root begins with a vowel. So here, do you see the O and the E? Gastroenterology, okay? Gastro and then entero are two combining forms. Gastroenterology is your term there. So you do keep that O if it's between two combining forms. You only drop the O if it's before the suffix that starts with the vowel. Read from the suffix back to the beginning of the word. So in medical terminology, you guys, when you're doing your exams and you're doing your homework and filling it out, you're going to work backwards, okay? We're going to start with the suffix when you're making a definition. If I tell you to give me the definition of electrocardiogram, you're going to start back with gram and tell me it's a record. You jump forward to electro of the electrical activity Cardio is heart, of the heart. So if I told you to give me the definition of electrocardiogram, you would say a record of the electrical activity of the heart. Does that make sense? So we work backwards. We start at the end of the term when we're, tr when we're uh, giving a definition. Here's basically what I just said. A gram is a record. Okay, cardio is the heart, and electro means electricity or the electrical activity. Sequencing, anatomic position determines uh, which root goes first. So we have gastroenterology, okay, there's that term again. Um, food enters the stomach first. Entero is the intestine, okay, so gastro means stomach, entero means the intestine, and then logi is the study of. So stomach comes first. It's not enterogastrology because the intestine doesn't come first in our body system right? It's gastroenterology because the stomach comes first and then the intestine. So anatomic position when you're creating bigger terms. We're going to work with combining forms. You're going to have three main things that you need to do. This is your job for medical terminology this semester. You're going to learn combining forms. That's number one. You're going to learn suffixes and prefixes. If you can study these, if you can make flashcards, if you study them when you're waiting in the car at the stoplight, if you study them while you're waiting for your car to gas up, while you're waiting at the doctor's office, while you're waiting between classes, study these. You'd be amazed at how much time you can study if you have these cards right in your purse or right in your car or right wherever you need them. 
Okay. I have students that tell me they study all kinds of crazy places, just these tiny little cards. They will take a regular note card and cut them in half. And I even saw somebody once cut them in fourths. That was way too small. And they punch holes in them and put them on a ring. These are all my flashcards. These are what I need to study. Now we can study them forward. You can study them backwards. You can study them in and out of order. You know, however you need to. That's all we learn this semester is parts. Combining forms, suffixes, and prefixes. So on the slide here, combining form is your root plus your combining vowel. So gastro is a combining form. Combining forms, it says always write your terms with the combining vowel. Always note, if I ask you on a test question, what is the combining form in gastrology? Don't tell me gaster. Tell me gaster slash O. You have to write it with the slash and then the O. Okay? Or remember those 5% of times, the I or the E. All right? Your combining form looks like those two on the page. Most medical words are easily divided. However, there's going to be a handful as we go through the semester that are just kind of junky. You're going to find that some defy a simple explanation. Some words fall back on Greek and Latin reference, okay? So there's going to be some that are just kind of cruddy and I, I just can't help you with or give you a great definition. A prefix then is a small part of the word that's attached to the beginning, okay? Prefixes are at the beginning. Combining forms are in the middle. Suffixes are at the end. So endocarditis. Endo is a prefix here. Endo means within. Okay. Cardia means pertaining to the heart. So the meaning for this would be pertaining to within the heart. We start at the end and work forward. Peri means around or surrounding. Cardium, again, means pertaining to the heart. So if we put pericardium together, and that is a real word, your definition would be pertaining to, surrounding the heart. Okay? Not all medical words, though, are going to have a prefix. Okay? There's just not as many of them. Uh, colonoscopy. Okay? That's a word that we all probably should know or have heard of before. There's no prefix on that word. If we break that word down, we would write a little hyphen right here. Colonol would be your combining form. Scopy would have a hyphen in front of it because it's a suffix. There's no prefix up here. Okay? When writing a suffix standing alone, always express it to look like this with the hyphen. When writing a prefix standing alone, always express it like this with a hyphen. I'll count you wrong in tests if you don't do it that way. Okay? When I say, what's the suffix in this word? Make it look like that. Okay, with the hyphen in front of it. Same for the prefix. So dividing terms up. Endocarditis. Okay, the combining form of endocarditis is cardio. But remember we dropped the O when the suffix started with the vowel. Okay, the I. What's the root of cardiology? Cardi. What's the suffix of cardiology? Itis. And what's the prefix? Endo. So do you see how we break our terms apart, break them down, and build definitions? That's what medical terminology is about. That's how we're going to do this course, okay? I can't make you make flashcards. I can't grade you on whether you use them or not. But I can tell you I have had students look me right in the face and say, I'm not a flashcard person. I've never had to. I think I'll be fine. And I said, okay, that's fine to each his own. I don't care how you do it. And that same student came to me two weeks later after they had done so poorly on exams, quick before their grade dropped too much, and said, I'm going back and I'm making flashcards. Okay, I'm starting over. You were right. Okay? I can't grade you on any of that, but I can tell you and advise you that's the only way to go. Make your flashcards, study those parts, you'll do just fine in this class. Good luck.